Hi, my name is Troy Hernandez, and welcome to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. Today, we're going to learn how to create a new project and job in Trimble Access, as well as reviewing all the settings in the Properties menu. We'll begin by creating a new project. The description, reference, and location, as well as the image are all optional. If you'd like to add an image, click on the folder and find your photo that you'd like to attach. This photo is going to be displayed on the projects menu. The next screen gives us two options on how to create a project. The first one is create from template or create from job XML or DC file. The job XML option is great if you're trying to upgrade a project from a TSC3 or an uncompatible project version. We begin by entering a job name. We'll call this project FPI. Now that we have entered the name, Let's take a look at the coordinate system. When we click on the coordinate system, we'll see scale factor only, select from library, key and parameters, no projection, no datum, and broadcast RTCM. Let's click on scale factor only. Scale factor only is meant for conventional observations only. You do not want to combine GNSS data with this type of projection. Next in the list is select from library. We need to select the appropriate system for your project from the predefined drop down list. In this example, I will select the US state plane 1983. Next, we will need to set the zone. We will see all the different state plane zones that we have to choose from. In this example, I'm going to choose Colorado Central. The next option is to decide if we want to use a geo model or not. In this case, we are going to select Geode Model 18. The next option is selecting the coordinate type. We are given three different options. Grid, Ground Keyed In Scale Factor, and Ground Calculated Scale Factor. If we select either of the Ground Scale options, we are given two options to enter the project location. Grid coordinates, entering the northing and easting and the elevation, or by entering the local coordinates, latitude and longitude. We are also required to enter the project height. The project height is the average height above the ellipsoid. For our project height, we'll enter 5280, and then we'll click on store. We will notice that the coordinate system now displays the system that we selected, Colorado Central, United States Plain, 1983. Now that we have our coordinate system set up, let's take a look at the units. The most important thing here is looking for the consistency in the unit. So here we have U.S. survey feet selected for distance and grids, U.S. survey feet for height, the area is square U.S. feet, and the volume is U.S. acre feet. And these can be switched between meters, international feet, and U.S. survey feet. The main, main goal is just to make sure they're all consistent. And then I like to set the temperature to Fahrenheit and the pressure to inch of mercury. And you can have the millibar or millimeter mercury. A little known feature inside of Access is the distance display. You can have it read out in um, feet and inches if you'd like. We'll go ahead and hit accept. Next is going to be the linked files. The link files allow you to reference CSV files without actually importing the files into the project. Uh, for example, your control points. So let's go ahead and hit and get the green the check mark. The check mark allows you to know that it's going to be referenced and that it's been selected. Next is we have the active map. So we're going to click on Browse. And let me find one that has... Okay, so here you can have a DXF as an active map or a, a geo-reference JPEG. The JPEG has to have the world file associated with it. So let's click on our DXF. And when we click it once, that allows the active map to be uh, visible. If we click it again, you'll see the 
square checker box around and that allows the the line work to be selectable and to be utilized for layout. If we hit this little side arrow, it shows us all of our layers. So if we click on the DXF name one more time, and now we have just the check mark. So we can select on just certain layers that we want to be selectable. And then the feature code library. We'll go ahead and click on that. And under the Kogo settings, we have distances, either ground, ellipsoid, or grid. And de depending on what area or coordinate system you're in, you may or may not need to have sea level corrections checked. And we'll hit accept. Under additional settings, you can use and click on yes for descriptions one and two. You can use the attributes of the base code and one feature that I really like is the point name range for a job. So for instance, if you have uh, your utility water points in the range of 1,000 to 2,000, you don't have to separate those points. It'll separate them for you and only bring in that point range for the specific job. And under the media file, you have a few ways to link photos either from the TSE tablet or the TSE 3. You can link it to the previous point, next point, or if you need to go back to a point that you've previously staken and you want to add a photo, you just give it the point name. And then the rest of the options that are available are optional. They're not required. And we'll hit accept. And there is our LinkedIn control points. And the little blue icon allows you to know that they're, those are linked points. And this has been another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. I hope you enjoyed the video and will join us next time.